I really enjoyed sports games in the early 1990s. The Sega Genesis had a huge library of killer football, basketball, baseball, boxing, and soccer titles over the course of its lifetime. It was a big reason why the platform did so well in North America, and I can still play many of them today. About four years into the life of the Genesis, Sega created a new brand label called Sega Sports to advertise their games. Essentially, this was Sega's way of identifying and trying to leverage their many franchises as the premier choices available. In other words, if it was a Sega Sports title, it was the best. Of course, a number of other developers made great sports offerings, but a game with the Sega Sports label usually meant a high-quality product well worth playing. Many of the Sega Sports releases were developed by companies outside of Sega, but they were all published by Sega. When the Saturn launched, we again had a number of games under the Sega Sports branding. But were these releases of the same pedigree? Did they live up to the fantastic reputation that had been cultivated on the Sega Genesis? In this episode, we are going to take a look at over 20 Sega Sports titles for the Saturn, see if they are worth playing, and see how they hold up today. Hope you guys enjoy Sega Sports on the Sega Saturn. Soccer releases were a somewhat confusing sport on the Saturn. Worldwide Soccer first showed up at the Saturn launch in North America, but it was based on a Japanese series called Victory Goal. These games share many similarities, but had different names. Victory Goal used teams from the Japan Professional Football League, while Worldwide Soccer used international teams. This would actually be a regular occurrence with soccer games released in North America Japan, and the PAL regions throughout the life of the Saturn. You'd get various cosmetic changes and team licenses spread out across game engines that were largely the same otherwise. This first release I always felt was a decent, if somewhat simple addition to the Saturn. It ran smoothly and played well enough for me to enjoy. There are better soccer games on the platform, but for launch software, this was not a bad game at all. Later games absolutely kill it, however. Nice play. When World Series Baseball showed up, I was blown away. I love the graphics engine here and the gameplay was top notch. It brought Sega Sports into the 3D era in fine style and was one of the better baseball titles at the time. Like Worldwide Soccer, the roots of this one were based on a Japanese franchise. Greatest 9 had different teams, but it was very clearly the same engine at work. This too can be really confusing because Sega released World Series Baseball in Japan as well, which essentially means the Japanese Saturn got a game with virtually the same engine just using the licenses from two different leagues. The Greatest Nine games were never released outside of Japan. Mark Witten. Ground ball through the infield. The throw to second. He's safe. Sega didn't often associate the racing genre with their Sega Sports offerings in those early days but F1 Live information was among one of the many for the Saturn. This was actually quite a solid racing title, feeling much more like an arcade release than your typical Formula One outing. It has commentary during the race and the graphics engine is fairly solid for an early Saturn game. Funny enough, when this came west as F1 Challenge, Sega left it to Virgin to publish, so it was not part of the Sega Sports lineup in North America. The commentary was also removed for a new soundtrack. This one's biggest issue is the small amount of tracks, having only three real-world options and three variations of the made-up Neo City Raceway. It's still a good time and highly recommended.
This one really doesn't need an introduction. Based on the insanely popular arcade original, Daytona USA played like a dream. This is the very definition of perfect arcade racing gameplay. The rub was is that it was in development as the Saturn itself was coming together, so it's rough visually. Running at only 20 frames per second, and with some nasty geometry pop in, it looks a damn sight uglier than the arcade original. Compared to modern racing games, it's also extremely short on content. You only have three tracks to race and a handful of cars to choose from. It plays great, but its shortcomings keep it from the same respect its arcade cousin demands. Pebble Beach Golf Links was developed by T&E Soft and released in every major region. It's based on the well-known course in California and uses pro golfer Craig Stadler as your guide. The visuals consist of well-animated, digitized golfers set against a slideshow of polygon course images. This was before golf games were using dynamic, fully rendered courses, so going back and playing this one can be tough. It's a good game, don't get me wrong, but compared to some of the stuff on the PlayStation and Nintendo 64, it's aged itself out of being a must-own. Still, many people get a kick out of Craig Stadler's commentary for some reason, and there are worse golf games available. NHL All-Star Hockey was Sega's first attempt at the sport in 3D. Well, at least the arena itself. Players are two-dimensional sprites as was custom early in that generation. This one plays okay, but there are many better options that showed up afterwards. It's actually quite tough to set up a successful shot thanks to the wonky camera views, while the CPU seems to do it with ease. The presentation is pretty good though, particularly its television style video segments. It also supports a massive 12 players at once via two six player adapters, so it could be a hell of a party game in those early days. Still, it's aged quite a bit and later entries were better in pretty much every way. Hello. New Jersey, goal scored by number three. Ken Danico, unassisted. There is a fair bit of criticism you could throw Sega Rally's way. It only has four courses and a handful of car choices. It has the archaic time limit that often robs you of a full race. But even with its shortcomings, this was a monumental achievement on the Saturn. It improved the performance and draw distance from Daytona USA incredibly, and the gameplay is just pure video gaming bliss. It plays like a dream and has a replay system so you can rewatch your greatest races or your worst choke jobs. Had Sega added a few more cars and tracks, this would easily have been the best racing game that generation for me. Medium left. Medium right, check one. Easy left, baby. Easy left, baby. One medium right. Hang On GP was a continuation of Sega's popular motorcycle racing series. Despite not being based on an actual arcade game, this has many of the shortfalls you'd expect of one. It only has three main courses, and the three you can unlock from there are variations of those previous three. You do get a number of bikes to choose from, and the actual graphics engine is rather well done. Its biggest issues are the lack of speed and the non-analog control. Playing this one with a digital directional pad is rough and often sees you hitting the walls more often than not. It does support analog control via the racing wheel, which improved things immensely. Curiously, this was only branded as a Sega Sports title in Europe and Japan. The US release doesn't feature the branding in the game or on the packaging.
Sega Worldwide Soccer 97 was a massive upgrade over the first Saturn release. Now sporting a new three-dimensional engine and vastly superior gameplay, this was one of the best soccer video games you could play at the time. The control was spot on, and even an amateur of the sport like me could enjoy it after only a few minutes. It had support for four players at once and lots of camera angles to play from. It didn't have the FIFA license, but still had an impressive list of 48 international teams. Pound for pound, it was an excellent representation of the sport. Keeper telling his players to push forward now. They're trying to find a way in from the left here. Well, they're all waiting for a possible pass. The NBA Action Series really started to come into its own on the Genesis, so I expected a lot from it on the Saturn. The first one was a decent attempt and I enjoyed it quite a bit. The visuals aren't anything special, but they get the job done with a fully three-dimensional engine that runs well. The gameplay has a pickup and play quality that made it quite easy to get into as well. It supports 10 players at once, so every player on the court could be played by a human, another awesome party feature if you had the means to pull it off. I'd rave about this one more, but its sequel is even better. World Series Baseball 2 was Sega's second game using a 3D play field and two-dimensional sprites for players. It basically just updates the teams and rosters from the previous season, but still is an excellent game. When this hit in late 1996, many 32-bit sports titles had begun moving to Polygon players, so this one took a few punches in magazine reviews for being so similar to the previous edition. Don't let that put you off, however. This is still a killer game of America's pastime, with the features and gameplay that rival any other offering during that era. Now batting, two outs, nobody on base. That was a great pitch to hit. What'll he throw next? Is it out of here? Bond, it's a game time home run. Of all the sports games I was looking forward to on the Saturn, it was the NFL that I wanted the most. Alas, Sega was woefully unprepared to give us one in 1995. In fact, it wasn't until the very end of 1996 before NFL 97 showed up. And my God, what a disappointment it was. My hatred of this pile of shit is well documented in my videos. Sega, unable and unprepared to make a quality game of their own, had to license a half-made travesty from another developer and had the gall to try and shove it on its poor Saturn fan base. Awful graphics, gameplay that was years behind its Genesis Montana series, and just an all-around failure of a product. It supports eight players at once, but why would you do that to seven other people? Not having a decent NFL title ready in 1995 was bad, but dropping this poisonous and unplayable garbage on the market was damn near unforgivable. Every employee at Sega of America involved should be ashamed of themselves. Every so often a game comes out that you had no idea was going to be as good as it was. Decathlete was one such game. There had been some good games in this category from Konami, but Sega knocked it out of the park with killer visuals, silky smooth performance, and gameplay that was actually quite challenging. It was ported from the STV arcade board, so what we got at home was a dead ringer. This one shines in multiplayer, and the record keeping makes breaking your buddy's time a reason to play it even more. Ten events can be played in both practice and arcade modes, so even alone, you always had a mountain of fun. Don't sleep on this one, it's one of the Saturn's best sports games.
Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition was Sega's answer to critics of the first game. Similar to Virtua Fighter Remix, this improved the visuals and performance across the board. You get a smoother frame rate, better textures, a further draw distance, and more content in the form of tracks and cars. Unfortunately for purists, they also messed around with the gameplay, which depending on how you feel, could make or break this one for you. There was a Japanese release based on it called Daytona USA Circuit Edition that changed the gameplay again, so if the Western release isn't to your liking, be sure to give that one a go as well. Sega was smart to expand the label to include extreme sports. Steep Slope Sliders was a snowboarding game where you could run mountain courses and pull off tricks. The graphics are decent, with a smooth frame rate and a pretty far draw distance for the Saturn. It's another one that was pulled from the STV arcade board. The Saturn had a few types of these games, but this was the best one by quite a bit. The models are the weakest of the assets here, but once you get past that, you have a game that plays well enough to earn its place on your shelf. When NBA Action 98 showed up, it had some notable differences from the first. The graphics are a lot more dynamic here, with swinging camera shots that follow the action closely and give you a much greater perspective of the basket. Ten player support is here, all the teams and stadiums, and you can create your own players. Visual Concepts did this for Sega, who also did the PlayStation game called NBA Fast Break 98, which is very similar. Don't let that turn you away though, it plays great and is the best basketball game on the Saturn. The late great Kobe Bryant was on the cover wearing his original number eight. Puts it up. Van Exo for three. He really got burned. Smith with the easy layup. World Series Baseball 98 was the third and final entry for the series on Saturn. This time it had a new polygon engine that included the players as well as the stadium. This allowed for new camera angles, awesome animation, and an overall more impressive presentation. The models are a bit janky, but overall you really have to appreciate the upgrade. The rest of the game still contains the same great gameplay as before, with batting and fielding natural and intuitive. Honestly, there is very little to critique here beyond its age. It plays as well as any modern baseball game, and it held my attention for an entire season playthrough. Sega developed these in-house, and it shows in its rock-solid quality. He hits it! The throw to second. He scores! A 6-4... Sega also handled the development of Worldwide Soccer 98. Like 97, this is a really good game that does an excellent job recreating the sport. The graphics are again impressive, with smooth performance, a fast dynamic camera, and animation that mimics the real thing closely. It supports four players, the AI is improved, and I really love the weather effects. Again, I am no soccer aficionado, but I know a good game when I see one. It again doesn't have the FIFA license, but still has a huge list of international teams. Sometimes I put a game on just to see the animation at work, and dream just how good an NFL game might have been on the Saturn, had it only a competent developer. He's looking for someone to find some space. Oh my goodness, that was a nasty one. Good skill. Sega Touring Car Championship was the last of the big racing games from Sega. 
Released in late 1997, I expected this to be an incredible port of the arcade original. Sadly, it really wasn't. The gameplay here does get a bad rap. Tweak the settings a bit and use an analog solution like the wheel or pad, and this can actually be decent. Heck, I dare say it's even fun. But the visuals here are an absolute mess, and a huge step back from what was seen in Sega Rally and even Daytona USA Championship Circuit Edition. It's just not a nice looking engine, and considering that this was a third year release, there's just no excuse for it. If you can look past this, you may find something worth playing, but with its limited content, it's just not worth the effort. Winter Heat is the sequel to Decathlete. As the name implies, this is all about winter sports like skiing, ice skating, and bobsledding. Because you have a much larger play area than before, the visuals offer up new camera angles and arguably a deeper gameplay experience. It also supports four players. I really like the feel of this one and it absolutely destroys any similar game like it on the Saturn. When Sega handled things internally, the quality was usually stellar, and this is another one that proves it. Manx TT Superbike was close to being something special. The graphics are nice, the gameplay is fantastic with an analog solution, and I even dug the music. It's got nearly a dozen bikes to choose from, and it has multiplayer for two racers. So what's wrong? Why does Manx TT disappoint? The problem is in its content. Sega again drops an arcade port in mid-1997 no less, with only two freaking tracks. So no matter how much fun you have with Manx TT, the replay value takes a massive nosedive because you just get tired of playing the same two courses. I know it's based on the Isle of Man contest, but this needed more content badly. Our last title is NHL All-Star Hockey 98, and man is it an improvement over the first. This was essentially a sequel to NHL Power Play 96, as it was developed by Radical Entertainment with Sega handling the publishing. It looks good, has 3D players, and the gameplay is orders of magnitude better than the first All-Star Hockey. There's loads of new animations, new camera angles, and you can play with eight people at once. It's got all the real teams, tons of real players, and all the moves you'd expect of a top-notch product. It has a glaring flaw, however. The performance is quite sluggish, making the game feel slow. Hockey can be a lightning-fast sport, and you just never get a sense of that here. It's still a good game, but having a choice between this and Power Play 96, I'll take the latter every time. Overall, Sega Sports showed up decent on the Saturn in a number of categories. Sega only really crashed and burned with their NFL franchise. How we went from the stellar Montana titles every single year to just one game on the Saturn that sucked to high heaven, I'll never know. Fortunately, the Madden football games on the Saturn picked up the slack and provided us with two options that were far better experiences. If you are a sports fan, most of these are really affordable, doubly so if you explore the Japanese variants. And don't be afraid to do that. There are a number of differences in some of these that make them worth a look, especially when it comes to different leagues and such. I know retro sports games have a bad reputation among collectors, but I really enjoy getting out an old favorite and firing up a game. Some of these still have a depth and fun factor that make them well worth playing, especially if you have a friend with you. 
if you are in the market for a few Sega Sports titles, they tended to get better with multiple releases. Worldwide Soccer 98 is better than the first. World Series Baseball 98 is more impressive than the original, so on and so forth. For me, Sega Sports was a huge reason I loved the brand in the 90s, and my memories of them can be just as potent as any good action or RPG game. I know many of you feel the same. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.